Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Oh, today you are in for a treat because I got to talk to an amazing actress and friend. Her name is Gloria Garabua. She is an actress and an acting teacher. We're both from the Boogie Down Bronx, so there's already a good connection that is happening here. You've seen Gloria, oh my gosh, and so many stuff. She works, she is a booking magnet herself. I first got to know her from her recurring role on Grey's Anatomy, but she's been in things like Southland, Snowfall, The Good Doctor, Legends. You can just check her out on IMDb, honey. Her list is long. I love getting to talk to fellow New Yorkers because I don't know, our, our history of growing up, there's a lot of similarities that happen in our, our childhood. So I can't wait for you to hear and get to know Gloria. So tune in, get your snack, call a friend, y'all can watch it together, all right? And enjoy this episode of Booking Magnet Magic. See you soon. All right, here we are. What's up, Gloria? Hey, Christine. <laughs> How you doing? Um, I am so good. I'm so happy that you are here. Thank you for saying yes. Thank, Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you're here. You know, this whole series, and for those of you who've been watching and listening, you know, like you've been getting the good, good. You've been getting to the real nitty gritty of hearing from artists who are just like you, they may be a little further along than you, but they are, they have lived a life and they are on this journey. And I'm so excited for you all to meet Gloria. Um, don't worry in the show notes, I'm going to put all her links, bio, all the stuff you can watch her in. You probably already seen her in many things. Um, like I, when I first met her, I was like, Oh, Grey's Anatomy. I remember yes. Grey's Anatomy. Um, and it's been a couple of years since we've seen each other. Cause we used to see each other a lot more at the Emmy FYC events here in LA. Yep. And then that stopped. <laughs> yeah. But, you, know, we'll, you know, we'll things going on in the world, but we are here now. Um, for those who don't know your story, like what we have in common, we're both in the Bronx. I found that out today, which makes me excited. Boogie down, yeah. <laughs> but how did you get started in, in acting in, in New York City? When I was in New York, I just did school plays and things like that. And I always had an interest in it, but I never thought I'd do it for a career. And honestly, the decision came in high school. So in high school, I was really just gung-ho about being a doctor. I thought I'd be a vet. And then when it was time to choose a major in college, I decided to go with acting because I, I, I've always loved it, but I always felt like I needed training. I had no training other than just being thrown in and having fun, right? And I thought, um, how do these people on TV get there? They can't be right. that much more different than me. Let me, let me just do this in college and then figure it out from there. So I got my degree. And then once I got my degree, I was like, I better pursue this. I just spent a lot of money on this. So, so I just, I need a really, return on my, yeah, right. So I just spent, um, just mornings getting up early and going to Manhattan and auditioning for anything, no matter what it paid. I just wanted the experience and that I was just taught in college, one of my mentors said, your job as an actor is the footwork. You've got to pound the pavement. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a job that day, do not stay home. What are you doing? So I right. would, uh, to make money, I had temp jobs. Uh, but if I didn't have a temp job that day, I was auditioning. And I would force myself to audition from morning to night. Now, at that time, I wasn't wow. in any of the unions. So this is what I do. I'd get up yeah. super early. I'd get down to any of the equity auditions. I wasn't equity at the time. So that meant waiting in line just to sign up for non-equity, hoping to be given a slot and then coming back for that time slot. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so in between, I'd run yeah. to another audition for a short film or for whatever I could, because I memorized the New York City subway. I knew where all the rehearsal and audition studios were so I can get there fast. I would go do an audition mm -hmm. and come back. And then I wouldn't let myself go home until I felt like, well, that's it. There's nothing left to audition for that I know of today. And I do it all again the next right. day. And so um, yeah. I finally just uh, submitted for something here in California, actually in San Diego. I booked it. It was a play. Mm -hmm. And when I flew out here to do it, I thought, mm -hmm. you know what? Let me just stay out here for a little bit and see how it goes. I bought a car, cost me $1,600 and um, it broke down <laughs> within, within like two months. It was awful, but I had my little car, which is what you need in LA. And I started booking right away in LA. I couldn't believe my luck. And I just haven't left. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That's such a great story. What I, what I love hearing and I can totally relate to is pounding the pavement. And if you're maybe younger in the industry, you don't even know what that means. Literally. It's like walking. It's like, it's waiting. It is being non-union and sitting somewhere for hours, packing a lunch, hoping (laughs) to be seen. I mean, that really speaks to how driven, driven you were and how hungry you were to be, to say like, Mm, it's too early to go home. I don't, am I working? No, because what am I going to do when I go home? So what else is there? We would get the backstage newspaper. Yes, and that's it. In the backstage, okay, who's doing what today? And I love that because it just, if you could at least, you felt like you had some control. Yeah. In, I, yeah. I kept the notebook. I would cut out and I love that. It felt like a little arts and crafts project, but I would cut out every ad that I was going to audition for that week. And I would paste it in my notebook um, in order from Monday through Friday. And I would make a note next to it what I needed to prepare. Because some would audition with a monologue, some you needed music, right? I would set out my little outfits. <laughs> um, and in New York, when you're doing this kind of a thing, at least most actors, they use a little suitcase. Because you're out in the winter, so you have your winter boots and your coat. But for that audition, you might need your character shoes or a little dress. So I had a little suitcase with me all the time. And in New York, I lived in a a five-story walk-up. And so me bringing up the suitcase every single day, but it was what I needed. And there I'd put my lunch. And another thing I would do is, because I couldn't warm up my voice in the morning. um, Because when I graduated from college, I was still living with my family. So they're all sleeping. I would wait till I got into the subway. When the train passed, I'd be like, la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> I would warm up in the subway. I'd walk to the end of the, what do you call it? You know, the terminal. And then I'd wait for the yeah. train to pass. So I had the length of the entire train to do my warm up. To do your warm up. Yep. Wow. And then I had a friend teach me you know, because you got to stay warm in New York City in between auditions, but you can't be spending money going to cafes all the time. So yeah. I learned all the hotels that let you sit in their lobby and not harass you. So <laughs> that I could use the bathroom and just sit and just breathe, you know, yeah. and get out of the cold. So I did all that in New York. And or then when I moved to clothes, yes, you know, change the, the clothes. Cold. Then when I got to LA and I got a car, I was like, Damn, having a trunk is awesome. <laughs> Everything goes in the trunk. You don't have to carry anything. <laughs> I love that. So you were like, I got to, you got to LA and was like, wow, this is a trunk. If needed, I could sit in my car. I can eat lunch in my car. I could change in my car if I need to. <laughs> and I used to carry a second outfit just in case I got a last minute audition. But you know, that really hasn't been an issue for me, last minute auditions. I think if you're more of a commercial actor, that it, that can be a thing. But for the TV and yeah. film industry, I, I have a little bit of notice. So I eventually took the second outfit out of my trunk, but I did have it there because I wanted to be a professional actor, right? And just be ready in case I needed it. What I love about that is, and I was talking to another actress earlier today, Denitra Eisler, who's on a show called The Resident. And we were talking about just coming up from doing theater and and how just the preparation of from school and then getting your 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 footing in theater it just trains you in a in such a different way it's really hard to describe you know the way you learn to think on your feet and go with the flow and like really show up it's a different experience then and this isn't shade to people to people now who may get discovered on Instagram or something like that but <laughs> There's just a difference in in how the training has affected us all these years. I agree. Um, and sometimes I worry because the medium of TV and film and students that are brand new, they think acting is just this, right? Yeah. Right? But coming up from theater, it was always in, entrained in me that I have to use my entire body. So when I coach, I try to you know get them to stand <laughs> so they can use their bodies. Um, Yeah, our theater training was fantastic. I mean, what I learned in college has really translated to my TV and film. I mean, I had to learn how to adapt to the camera, but I'm glad that I started in the theater. I'm glad I started bigger and then got smaller as opposed to small and then learning to be broad. 
Yeah. Yes. And that's something about that hustle, that New York hustle, that mindset. I'm sure by the time you get to LA, at least from my experience, you realize LA has a lot of people saying that they want that they they that they are actors and they want to do this, but they're not all really pursuing it fully, you know, not fully focused. So when you show up here with that kind of energy, like, hey, let's get it, you know, right. it's it helps you stand out very quickly in the industry, in my opinion. I definitely tried to do that here. And I learned what, as soon as I got here, I learned LA just moves at a slower pace. <laughs> so, right. you know, cause in New York, you could accomplish four things on one block. Right. But right. here in LA, <laughs> everything is, let's say those four things are in different neighborhoods. So it'll take you all day to drive there, do your thing, drive back. <laughs> so I just learned yeah. I have to adapt to the city. I can't force people to go on my New York time clock. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like being on island time when you, when I take vacations and you go to a, a Caribbean island or something and they're like, just, it's good, man. It's good. Just easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You could ask for that second pina colada, but just chill. They're not in a right. rush to bring it. <laughs> when you were, when you were younger, cause you said you, you, you've always loved this. You didn't think this was something you would do professionally back then, but who, when you watch TV, movies, or when we would go to see plays, like who are some of the performers that still to this day stick out in your brain? It's some of the oldies. I love Lucy, Honeymooners. I mean, I remember I wasn't really encouraged to watch TV. My mom always really focused on school. So I was allowed to watch a little bit when I got home from school, which was just cartoons, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, at night before I went to bed, my dad was the one watching TV. And growing up in the Bronx, we shared a room. Until yeah. I was like, I don't know, 11, <laughs> right? And then we finally moved and I got my own room. But I would watch whatever they had on. So it was like Star Trek. I mean, I'm aging myself, right? But these were all reruns, not originals, right? So <laughs> Star Trek, Honeymooners, um, Tom and Hardy. So I just remembered learning from the oldies and mm -hmm. thinking they're funny even when they don't speak. And that really got my attention. And I love that. And we were really poor growing up. So I didn't have the luxury of watching movies. I think I saw five movies my entire childhood. It was like uh, Jungle Book, <laughs> Menudo, because I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> um, uh, gosh, um, Jonathan Brandeis, Never Ending Story. I mean, those are the things I saw. And then, then finally, when I got into high school, it was all about studying. And then after school, I'd go to work. I had a job after school. Um, and then college, I studied theater. So I wasn't really watching TV or really studying film. So really, it was just always something inside of me that I always just wanted to do. And the theater that I did in school is really what made me think I could actually be good at this. And yeah. the feedback I got was always positive. So that's really what made me think I could do this. And I'm glad I got the training I did. It just did wonders for my confidence, yeah. really. Um, but then once I moved to Los Angeles, that's when. I really paid attention to film. And I knew I had to do that because this is the land of film. Yeah. But um, shortly after I got here, I qualified for SAG. And I got into the SAG nominating committee, just like that. You know, that's random. Yeah. yeah. So when I got into that, I, you know, there's screenings all hours of the day. I was brand new in LA, brand new to the system. And I was like, wow, movies at 10 a.m.? Right. And then I, I looked around, I was like, people are really into this. I should pay attention. <laughs> so I was in my early twenties and that's really when I, when I, when I really got into film, believe it or not. And as so, you studied, as you studied these different artists, people you were drawn to, like, I love how you said I was drawn to some, even the people who weren't speaking, like, what are some of those we love to, I'd love to focus on what makes people magnetic and what, when, what's, when some, what makes you lean in when you're, when you started watching movies and doing more TV? For me, it's when people, you could tell they're in the moment because they're reacting when not, nothing is expected of them in that moment because it's, it's, the, it's the partner's spotlight. But if they're in the shot, they're still reacting. And that's something that I know as a coach, I've had to like draw out of people. Like don't not act because it's not your turn to speak. You right. know, you're expected to live and breathe in the moment always. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you never know how they're going to edit later. So just because the partner you have has the speech doesn't mean they're not going to cut to you for a reaction. But if you don't give them anything, yeah. there's no, nothing to cut to. And honestly, coming from the theater, 
I just learned you stay alive always. Yes. So Ooh, yes. in film, it, it can be exhausting, as you know, because it's take after take after take of the same thing. And they use whatever tells the story best. But mm -hmm. you got to stay fresh every single take because something can go wrong and you got to stay sharp on your feet. Yeah. Uh, you may have to improvise. Uh, you want to be there for your partner, especially when the camera turns around and the spotlight's on them and not you. But you're there. You know, yeah. they're dependent on you because the camera can be intimidating. Yeah. So to me, it's what's captivating is when I watch someone just living and breathing and they're, they don't have any dialogue. I've always mm -hmm. just been a fan of that. And so um, I know whenever anyone coaches with me, I'm always like, okay, what's happening in that pause? Yeah. I'm really into that. And I, I take my time, even when I'm doing my own auditions, I, unless there's a reason for the character to talk fast, yeah. I'll take my time because I want to find the thought, mm -hmm. you know? So that's really what captivates me. Mm, I love that. All the stuff in between. I love that too, because there's a whole story being said in the in-between, in between those lines. Um, and again, if you're present, if you're present, that's so good. Yeah. What, this is my, what I call my, my Oprah moment, my Oprah question. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you, what does Gloria know for sure is her magical superpower when you step on a set oh. you, you turn on your camera to do a self tape no one has to tell you this you know <laughs> you know that spark I, I know what it is and so <laughs> I, I gotta be careful because sometimes it's charming and sometimes it's not so cute it's um <laughs> I'm I'm really down to earth almost so much that people don't expect it so I'll say something that's silly and funny and people will just go like it doesn't match the exterior. Like for example, right now I got my jewelry on, right? Sorry. But I'll just say something silly. I just came, my friend invited me to an award show today <laughs> and I'm there in a nice dress and, and I'm just talking regular talk, telling him how I got the car wash before I got there. And, but that I think is part of my authenticity. Mm -hmm. If I'm, if I'm to give myself a little pat on the back, I think it's yeah. that. And I think it's that I, I might say wild things. They're appropriate. Yes. But, um, but I Don't just say, and I think no one expects that from, you know, I try to, I try to present as classy, right. <laughs> I try to present as put together. Um, but I'm and really, you do. You do. You thanks do. girl, but I'm from the Bronx. So I'm just real. And every yeah. now and then I say something real and, yeah. you know, I always am reminded of this candid moment. I remember that show Ashton Kutcher had where he would catch celebrities he would prank punk. celebrities. Punk, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Raven Simone was in one of those and they they punked her good. And she she was so polite to the person she thought she offended. She was so sweet. And I thought, if that were me, <laughs> I don't think that I would please this world when they saw it. Cause I just I can I can have a mouth on me. However, only when provoked. <laughs> and I think that's just part of who I am. And I think that's what has helped me work with celebrities because they're regular folks too. Yeah. And if everyone just drops this pomp and circumstance, if we're all just who we are, it's so much more relaxing on set. You get truer vulnerability on camera. You only need, you need less takes because of that. Right. Yeah. So I think that that's what's helped me book as much as I have in my life. I, I show up into the room prepared, but I'm also prepared to just talk yeah. and just be me. And then when it's time to turn on, <clears throat> I do it, but you've got to be able to turn off. Ah, right. And I think a lot of actors present and, and, you know, I think you can see through that. You can see through when someone is being something that they're not. Yeah. And no yeah. one wants to work with that. <laughs> yeah, because eventually the real you is going to show up. Oh yeah. It's like when we're dating the first, few, you know, first few dates, you know, <laughs> your representative is there. <laughs> Two years later, you got the sweats. It's like <laughs> thinking about that today. Cause you know, I got all dolled up for the award show, but this morning I wasn't looking cute when I woke up. <laughs> no, I wrapped my hair, which is how I get my hair. Like long like this I could flat iron it but I just wrapped it I woke up my, my Dana bandana was off I had my retainer in I had crusty <laughs> eyes and I'm like if anyone saw me now <laughs> but I'm like whatever this is real <laughs> this is real and you're like that's what the transformation is about and as artists 
We get to have that transformation all the time. I love that. <laughs> and I hope you're encouraged, those of you who are watching and listening right now, like each person I've talked to in this series has a different response and answer to this. But the key is, is to rem remember that you have something that is so unique and special about you. There's something that only you uniquely bring. And the more you just get to know yourself and tap into yourself, and it's okay to say, you know what, I'm charming. No, I'm a light. I'm joy when I step in a room. I'm so down to earth. People just automatically want to talk to me like it's okay to own that would you not Ooh, say it's okay? I'm inspired you just yes you just went on and on just now and I'm like that's right I'm a light and joy <laughs> yes no I I sometimes say these mantras to myself because gosh you know this industry can get you down right um so sometimes I'll just remind myself send love forward like if I know I have an audition, send love forward. Like let there be love waiting for me when I get there. Ooh, right? ooh that's good. Yeah. And I do that sometimes when I'm about to sit down with a student because, you know, I have bad days too. And sometimes I'm in the midst of something and I'm like, oh, I have a minute left to sit down and I haven't gotten X, Y, and Z done. And yeah. they don't know any of that, <laughs> right? They're here for something that I can provide. Let me get there. Mm -hmm. Little things like that, or like reminding myself that I take up space and it's okay to take up space, especially because you've met me, I'm small. Yeah. And um, if I don't take up that space, <laughs> I could get pushed easily. Yeah. So yeah. I gotta take up my space. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who meets me forgets my height because I've got this whole Napoleon complex, right? Where I, I project and I, yeah. I just take up space, but it's mm -hmm. really how I see myself. I forget I'm short until I take a picture with someone. And then right. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's and I, I'm always there's there's been several students I've told take up space and take up time, like especially in auditions. Especially you know don't so many of us can rush. Oh, we're so the, the nerves come up and we just rush. And you're like, what happened? Like, why were you rushing? This was your time. You yeah. know, you yeah. drove to that audition or you turn hit that record button. Take up space and take up time and, and let and let them see your light. The casting producers they want you to win. They want you to be yeah. There. I got a good piece of advice when I was in college, back in the old days when we used to walk into auditions live, <laughs> um, which, you know, maybe that'll come back. But anyway, um, I was told if you walk into the room and casting is writing something down, perhaps they're writing a note for the previous person, don't start until you see them look up. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing that and it was awkward for a moment because there was silence because they were writing. And then I think they felt that I was waiting for them and then they stopped. Yeah, because like, I was oh, never rude about it. Like, her, put, put your pen down. It was just like, I'll wait. And then I started. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that also shows command of the space and, and confidence. You know, like, I want their attention. Geez, as hard as we work to prepare yeah. these auditions, you don't yeah. want to feel like you're someone's background noise. <laughs> right? I hate that. Say that. That's a, that's a good nugget for whenever you do go back in the room. And I know uh, commercials and a lot of commercials are still in person now, but we'll see. I don't know if it, I think everyone's so spoiled now by it. I, it won't, it won't be anytime soon. And at the time of this recording anyway. I know. I agree with you. Although the one thing that I miss is um, having just a little bit of extra attention in the room. Get, it would give me the opportunity of perhaps succeeding further yeah. because now casting is receiving self tapes from everyone. Yeah, from everywhere. So, yeah. You know, I mean, they're inundated, oh, probably overwhelmed. And how do, do they watch them through and through? Do they watch everyone? I don't know. <laughs> but if I had an appointment in the room, I know they saw me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. You know, speaking of that, you know, we touched on it a, a little bit, but, you know, this career is filled with ebbs and flows. And to say anything else would be a lie. You know, there's going to be moments where, you're working a lot, working a lot, and there'll be moments when it's quiet and maybe you're supplementing your income in many other ways. Look, I'm very transparent to my audience about when I lived in Atlanta, I had, I'm Jamaican, so I had multiple, two, two, three jobs, okay? I don't, I didn't like, I don't play the starving artist games, like too mm -hmm. wrong for that. I like lights on and I like food in my belly, right? <laughs> Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. 
actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. So we all deal with this different. And so whether it's work is slow or you just, you were, it was down to you and that other person and oh, oh, so close, these hit and miss moments. How do you, and how have you over the years found ways to, to pace yourself, give yourself grace and deal with this roller coaster ride that can be this mm. issue? So at this point in my career, uh, sometimes the letdowns are, harder than I ever expected. You know, when I was doing co-stars and guest stars, it was easy to expect that I may not be the person for that job mm -hmm. because, um, you know, the, I think the smaller roles get a lot of people uh, being seen, but the, the bigger roles, the leads, they have lists, you know, they have straight offers. Mm -hmm. So when you're competing in that pool, ooh, it's, I, I just feel like it's really hard. And, you know, by the time you're auditioning for a series regular or a lead, you're just so darn excited and so darn proud. You think this could change your life. You want it more than ever because this is what you work towards. And if you've gotten multiple callbacks for a particular project and then you don't get it, that one does hurt. And that's yeah. happened to me, you know, several callbacks, several sessions with directors, and then you don't get it. And at that point you go, what? That at that point it it does hurt a little bit more because you're like it was literally between me and two more people, <laughs> right? So when it, you just have to be kind to yourself. So like what do you if actually I actually do, what do you actually do? You get the call or the email. They went another way. Okay, how does I let myself like? cry? I just <laughs> let myself cry because I would be lying to you if I said it's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> It's not fine. I mean, when I'm auditioning for a series lead of a major network, yeah, I have put coaching into it. I have put hours of prep. I have given my appearance thought. Yeah. And so when they go in a different direction, yeah, I get really sad. Yeah. And But I do give myself a deadline because I realize there's no point in staying in that sad place for too long. Mm -hmm. So, you know... It, it depends. Like there was a, a project last year. Oh my God. When I found out that went another, there was two actually last year. I think I gave myself a whole weekend <laughs> to just go. I'm, I'm worth it. Yeah. it. It's going to happen. My time is so close. These are little tests, right? But it's, I have to pep talk myself through those. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't crying over guest stars or co-stars. At least I'm crying over the stuff that yeah. people could understand why I'm crying over it. Yeah. Um, I don't cry for all of them. <laughs> Every now and then I go, yeah, that one I wasn't connecting with anyway. Like there's, there's always an audition you get that you're like, I don't even know if I would cast myself. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's some that I'm like, if they give it to anyone else, they're crazy. Right. Yeah. This is me. Like I was born, they wrote me, right? Oh my yes. God. Um, and then when they go in a different direction, it's usually a bigger name mm -hmm. and there's nothing I can do about that. Like, I know I don't have the followers so-and-so has, and I know I don't have the resume so-and-so has. So I go, okay. <laughs> and that's all you can do. So yeah, I let myself cry about the big ones, give myself a day or two, and then I, I move on. Yeah. There was I love, a more, I love what you, what you're saying though, about pepping yourself up, like giving yourself the space. And I've had several people on this series say the same thing, by the way, um, <laughs> over here, but I love the time limit and at least having some tools, some affirmations, some, like, because it can be so easy to, to say, and some of you listening and watching can resonate with this. What's wrong with me? Why didn't they pick me? Maybe I should quit like all these things. So I love at least hearing also that Cause you know, you, and you're a coach too. Like you, we can know intellectually, but we still, it's heart centered. This is heart centered work. In our well, I was watching the SAG Awards recently and I forget who it was that said it. Um, I think it was Ariana. Uh, anyway, somebody said, remember you're only one job away. And I was like, preach, it's true. You're just one job away. So you just got to keep chipping away at it. Get more things on your resume, meet more people. Um, but the other thing I want to tack on is I do go back in my brain and I celebrate my successes. Like 
Last week I was pinned for something. I didn't get it, but I was pinned. I can say I was pinned. I'm not, not succeeding. Right. You know, it's unfortunately people only see the stuff that airs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't see all the behind (laughs) stuff. I mean, I'm sure you've done some auditions that if those auditions ever televised, we would see your heart and soul, but no one ever sees that stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's why I, I personally, for me, I have, I do, I do celebrate every audition and, and my husband watches me because if he tapes at me sometimes and I'll watch the playback, I'm like, Oh, you killed it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had a whole hype party in this office because I know no one else may ever say it. And I know. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. I have had one or two auditions that a few hours later, let's say I'm chilling in my living room about to binge something. And I go, but I want to watch my audition again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that on TV. And then yes. I just like. <laughs> that's what I love it. Cause that's you telling yourself, good job, Gloria. You did yeah. that. Well, and I also like- try to look at it. Like I'm casting and I'm like, do I believe her? Mm. You know, does she fit the role? And I always go, yeah. <laughs> so good. So I feel good about it. Just a little biased. Yeah. Oh, I just, you know, I'm humble. <laughs> but listen, I was telling somebody, I was like, there has to be, I believe, a certain, a certain level of, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, a certain level of delusion. I think we have to have as oh, artists. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> industry. Like you're telling me I'm gonna do all this work before I ever get paid. Like. <laughs> You're gonna tell me no most <laughs> days, right? <laughs> it sounds bananas, and so there has to be a part of us. Whatever I say, whatever you gotta say to yourself to just <laughs> get back up again and enjoy. I mean, if we, and if you don't love it, if you don't love it, it's gonna be this. <laughs> no, I agree with you a hundred percent because that that delusion is your spark. Yeah. Like if you can just dream and see yourself in lights and all that, others might go, well, they're, you're delusional, but you're like, yeah, but I believe that. Yeah. You know, so you got to dream. Yeah. Shoot. Someone's going to dream for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one last thing before we get ready to go, and this has been so good. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about how far you've come. My brain is still thinking about the story you said earlier. And I know we had a little tech difficulty earlier. So I want to make sure I get to say it again. I'm still visualizing you growing up in the Bronx and then going to school and then taking a play in California and just was like, I think I'll stay. <laughs> and just, yeah. and like, and just sticking with it through the years, you know, because I imagine, did you move I know it's such a sidebar, but did you move here alone or did you, did any family members? I did. It, I cried the first, I think it was two months every single night because I was scared. Yeah. I was honest to God scared. I'm like, I don't know anyone. I have no money. I was eating boiled eggs for my main meals. Yeah. And, you know, I was taking jobs. I worked as a clown. <laughs> Yes, clown. For a long time, actually. I I ended up liking that job, actually. But I just did whatever I could. uh, Because, you know, first you just need a little gas money. And some food money. And then, you know, then you can print the headshots. (laughs) Right? But yeah, I was scared, scared, scared. And I was still showing up to auditions with a smile. Right? Because I'm like, this could be the one. And you just, you just do that. I mean, eventually I made friends. (laughs) You know, I'm still here. But yeah, it's hard in the beginning when you move here alone. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely can relate to that. That The first time I moved to LA in 2011, I, I was alone. And it's, LA is a big, t- California is a big place. And, you know, getting a circle community um, is something really huge, which is why I'm always pushing that. So if you're watching this, listening, um, you know, our Hollywood Bound Actors community is always here to welcome you with open arms and you can network because it's, Isolation can be a dream killer, you know, and especially when you're in a new place for sure. Or when you're in your own hometown, but no one else knows, can relate to what you do. Maybe no one else in your family does what you do and you're the black sheep of the family or people think you're (laughs) cuckoo for going for this crazy career and you should get a real job that's stable, right? All those things. It also makes you hungry, you know, because I think I worked harder because of the fact that I I really did, honest to God, need a job, (laughs) right? I'm like, I have got to get some money in that bank account. So yeah. I'm going to study this audition and work my little butt off. Oh, 
real sidebar, um, for my very first audition ever in LA, it was on Wilshire Boulevard. And I didn't know where that was. And those were the days of Thomas Guides, not oh, GPS. Oh, big maps. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm new here. I don't want to be late. I should drive it tonight. So I drove the route the night before mm -hmm. just so that I could recognize the building, scope out the parking in the area. I mean, I don't think I ever did that again, but I did it for my first audition. And yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that I did. It was helpful. But those are the things that you do when you're hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, you don't want to be stressed on the day. You want to know. <laughs> Actually, fun fact, my mother, shout out to my mom, Valerie, when we grew up in New York, she had she got a car later in life and she wasn't always comfortable driving. So anytime she had like an interview or something, she, we would take the car the night before and drive to where it was. Yeah, we did that oh. all the time. And it just relaxed her. And then it was fun for me because I got to see, is that where you're going to go tomorrow? You know, oh, sweet. So I can totally relate to that because, yeah, we didn't have no, there was no GPS in the, and then no cell phones. Right. <laughs> the average person had, you know. Right. I used to walk around with a little pad, make a right on this street, make a left <laughs> on that street. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Last thing before we go, I want you for a moment to hold in your mind's eye a vision of a seasoned actor, been doing it maybe 15 plus years and maybe they've hit just a slump, what they feel is a slump, a plateau, just, it's just extra quiet. They're feeling really frustrated. Then I want you to go to the flip side, maybe to that that new young up and coming actor who's left everything behind, but can't, doesn't seem to be breaking through quick enough. And they're both questioning it all. Should I, am I even good enough for this? Am I just, am I just, am I just crazy? Am I just, should I just, maybe I should just throw in the towel. What would you say to speak to their heart, to give them a piece of encouragement right now? Oh. <laughs> um, ah, okay. If you died tomorrow, can you say that you at least tried? Because if I died tomorrow, I could say I tried. Yeah. And that gives me peace of mind and then there's no regrets. But I would have regrets if I gave up because I would wonder, and that's, that's a killer. I would wonder, could I have ever made it? And that's why I'm still here. And that's why giving up is not part of my path. Because maybe I'm one of those actors who makes it at 75. <laughs> right? Right? But I'll never know if I get off the path. So I, I don't want to be on my deathbed with any regrets. So that's what I would say is if you die tomorrow, ask yourself, did you at least try? Yeah. Sounds morbid, but... <laughs> No, it's, it's real because there's lots of, you know, there's a Les Brown, a huge motivational speaker in this oh, yes, I know. space, you know, Les Brown has a famous talk where he talks about one of the saddest places to pass is the graveyard because there's so many dreams buried there that never came to pass. You wow. know, it's, it's, and whenever I pass graveyards, it doesn't make me sad because of the people have passed on. That's just part of life. But I think about, gosh, how many people did not go for the dream, you yeah. know? Yeah. For whatever reason. So I, I, I think that's true. And if, if the call is pulling you that much, which for most of us as, as actors, like an artist, it's a tug. Like even when you, even when you fake quit, I'm done. I'm done this <laughs> week. I know. Meanwhile, you're done for like a week, you know? <laughs> and, and that's the other thing I'm sure your viewers are familiar with too, is like, you might have an audition today. It meant everything. But then another audition comes tomorrow and it means everything, right? <laughs> and it just keeps going like that. And then you can't remember last week's audition. Yeah. Yeah. That happens sometimes when my agent will call. I like say I booked. He'll go, hey, you got that job. I go, which one? And he says the name of the show. And I go, which one was that? <laughs> Same here. That was five auditions ago. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's something I know if some of you have, have an experience that it will come. It will come. But you, like Gloria is saying, you got to stay in the game. You know, mm. when, you, when you quit, you quit. And if you need to take a break, take the break, you know, take the break to have the kids and the family and the travel. And I do believe, and I do, I definitely can say this pandemic has taught me even to take the trips, you know, pack your camera when you need to pack your camera, pack your self tape situation, but live life, you know, because you want to, this is, this, this is an ongoing, it's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. That's, that was inspiring to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I want to 
I want to book a few trips myself, actually. And it shouldn't interfere with my career because basically I could film anywhere. Yeah. You just have to get a little creative, but you can do it. Absolutely. I, I certainly do. And that's on my team. I have the stuff with me. I got it with me. And then when I'm booked out for real, I'm clear about that too. But I know also the seasons of the industry, right? I know when. Yeah, when, when to book out. Yeah. Are, you know, so it's all yeah. those things. You don't book out pilot season, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. I don't care. If, right. Uh, right. Stephen calls. It's fine. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Like if I'm not at, at my house, the, the self tape setup is with me in my bag as yes. I travel. Yes. So, Good. <laughs> oh my gosh, Gloria, this has been so inspiring. Thank you for being transparent. Thank you for sharing your story. And I know you've inspired somebody watching and listening right now i think we need more we need more of this we need more i know we it's easy to see the red carpets glitz and glamour only but there's so much more to the industry and to being successful and having longevity so thank you for sharing yes, your story thank you for you. having me on your show you're so inspiring i follow you on instagram and i'm always like how does christine have time to do all this Ooh, you're with the, amazing with the team and and i do the most sometimes <laughs> I do yeah, yeah. Well sometimes, but yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the team that I have, but I just, you know, I'm like you, I would, I feel you. I'm just, hung, I have this hunger for, for life and for the visions that come to me while I sleep. And I'm like, okay, all right, let's Ooh. do it. So I love that that happens to you. Yes. Yeah. So that just wakes me up. It really, and yeah, I get tired, but then I stop when I get tired, but I just, yeah. I'm so excited about the visions. So that's why I just keep heading in that direction. I wish you the best because I enjoy watching your success. I mean, I looked at your IMDb and I was like, damn, this girl works. Yeah. And we have a lot of similar credits. And I just, mm -hmm. I want you to blow up because you're a fellow Bronx person. And I just yeah, want you to You too. Come on with the Bronx love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Gloria, have an amazing day. Thank you all for watching Booking Magnet Magic. If you've missed any of this, any part of the series, check them out. This is such a transformative series. And I'm so grateful for you all tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.